Well, good Tuesday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods. I hope everybody's having a great Taco Tuesday. I hope all your taco dreams come true. And here we are, another week. Um, another week of Dallas Cowboys, and we are sitting here at 5-3, and three, having lost now to the Arizona Cardinals, the San Francisco 49ers, and now the Philadelphia Eagles. But let me, you know what? I am always the guy who's more than just the glass half full. I'm happy that I got a glass that I can even put something in because a lot of people out there even got a glass, New York Giants. What they got is a glass quarterback and a glass running back. Sorry, Rasheed. Just sorry. It's Giants Cow Giants Cowboys hate week. And we need to get you guys and destroy you to feel better about ourselves. It's just the way it is. But here's the thing. Here's the thing that that I want to say. I am hopeful because that's the kind of person I am. I'm gonna worry about today and tomorrow. I can't change what happened yesterday, the day before. 28, 29 years before I could only deal with right here and right now and do what I can to fix the problems that I have going forward. And here's the thing that's kind of crazy. Speaking of the New York Giants, I remember a New York Giants team that was struggling and literally just finding ways to win. That was a wild card team that everybody just thought, meh. They came into our number one seated house, kicked our ass on the way of going to one of the greatest runs in Super Bowl history, beating an 18 and 0 New England Patriots. So it's not how you start. It's not how you are in the middle. It's how are you at the end of the season? That's it. How are you, if you get an opportunity to make the playoffs, how are you playing during that time? At the moment, we look at, say, San Francisco. We'll see after coming back from the bye week how they do. They started off best team in football. You've lost three straight. Doesn't mean you're getting this. You're not getting this because you were great at some point during the season. You only get that when you're great at the end of the season. It hurt losing to the Eagles on the road. I think we can all say that the officials did pay a part in there. That last sack where Dak Prescott gets hit in the head should have been unnecessary roughness on the quarterback. It should have been pass interference on Jake Ferguson right there on the goal line. The guy tackled him before he even got a chance to catch the ball. Pass interference on Stefan Gilmore. That was a fantasy call. There was no pass interference there, bro. The hands to the face of Brandon Cooks that they picked up the flag. And I know Eagle fans say, well, we ended up with more penalties than you did. Well, I think there's a reason to that. Uh, but I'll, I'll get into that later. Right now, the thing that I want to say is I look at the Cowboys offense and it seems like, maybe I'm wrong, but the Cowboys are moving up the charts in the statistics and getting better and better with the offense. You've seen Dak Prescott over the last three games, eight TDs, one interception, a 72 completion percentage, um, 9.3 yards, 9.13 yards per pass, average 316 yards a game. You're seeing that Dak Prescott can perform. Part of that, I'm going to say, is the fact that we're beginning to get tight end play. One thing that is always overlooked by the Dallas Cowboys fans and things are what the tight end does. The tight end is as important as a great wide receiver. You can see Kansas City, the thing that's consistent is Pat Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. 
That connection right there is game coach. You can look at the game last year in the playoffs where George Kittle makes the key reception. That big target, that guy when plays are breaking down that you can go to, that security blanket. Jason Witten hadn't been that guy the last few years. Jason Witten was the guy who was always catching a lot of passes, but the reason why he was was teams were looking at and saying, we'd rather Jason Witten catch the ball than Amari Cooper because Amari Cooper can go to the house. Jason Witten is old and slow. He's going to catch it, get eight yards, and you're going to tackle him. So that's the guy they would leave open. He'd get numbers. He'd get 60, 65 receptions, but it's only like eight yards of reception. And since him, it's been a mismatch. Now, everybody will say Dalton Schultz. You know, We're having revisionist history now of players that we let go and say, we shouldn't have let go of Dalton Schultz. We shouldn't have let go of Zeke. I could say that about Cedric Wilson and Amari Cooper, but I'm not sure that Dalton Schultz, that we actually have to say that. Because, see, the thing, the problem with letting players go, it's not the problem. It's not, not that you're letting go players. You have to understand that you only have so much money to go around. There's nothing wrong with getting rid of players if you have somebody to replace them. When the Cowboys traded Herschel Walker, they ended up drafting Emmett Smith. They got somebody who could replace him that was younger and cheaper at the time. That's what you have to do. You can't just say, we'll just get rid of a guy who's productive and not replace him. That's the problem we're having right now with Zeke. They thought they could just replace and plug in Tony Pollard, but they're realizing that Tony Pollard is not an every down back that you can do that to. That's why his numbers went from 5.2 to 3.9 a carry. They're beginning to recognize that, and they're reducing the times he's running the football, but they're still trying to run uh, him up the middle. It's a square peg in a round hole. Maybe it's a rectangular peg. Yeah, that's a rectangle. It's even harder to put a rectangular peg in a round hole. In a tiny hole, okay? Because you're not getting the holes that are like huge holes either. But one thing that has corresponded with a lot of the better games that the offense has played is that Jake Ferguson is coming on. Here's the interesting note. Let's compare the numbers right now, head-to-head, okay? They haven't played each other head-to-head. But what's interesting is Dalton Schultz and Jake Ferguson – Okay, they both have beards. They both have beards. Both have played eight games. Dalton Schultz has one more reception at 33 than Jake Ferguson at 32. Dalton Schultz has got 22 more yards with a 10.6 average versus Dalton Schultz at a 10.3. Dalton Schultz has four TDs. Jake Ferguson has three. So you look at that and say, okay, it's pretty comparable. What's interesting is actually that um, catch percentage-wise, this is where it's interesting because Dalton Schultz has had seven more targets. Catch percentage-wise, Jake Ferguson is actually catching more passes at 74.4. And if we look at Jake Ferguson's numbers where the first game he got two passes for 11 yards and three passes – for 11 yards since that time he has been stepping up where his worst game was the chargers where he only had one catch for 15 yards but you're looking at the ram game where he had four critical catches 47 yards and against the eagles he had actually a great game seven catches 91 yards and this is one of those areas that you really need to have that relief valve if you can get a tight end who can block and a tight end who can catch, all of a sudden, the quarterback can feel a lot more comfortable. You've got a big, wide body, a big target that you can see easily and dump it off to him when the play breaks down. It's the pressure relief valve. And for the first time in a while, maybe, just maybe, we really have a guy who can do that. Now, Jake dropped a couple of passes like some other people in this game. He hasn't dropped as many lately as he has in you know the first part of the season. He is still a young guy. This is only his second year. But it bodes well for us going forward. And this is what I say about the offense is, with the exception of Terrence Steele, Terrence Steele had an awful game. An awful, awful game. 
12 pressures, although he was going against one of the best pass rushers out there, and he's still recovering. Hopefully, this is not a case of Michael Gallup where he never really gets it fully back. Hopefully, he gets stronger and more confident as the season goes on. And if he does, if he can solidify, believe it or not, Tyron Smith and Tyler Smith were great on the left side. Tyron Smith's only problem is if we can get him on the field healthy, he's great. The problem is, is how many times are we not going to have him on the field healthy? But those are things that you look at and say from the first couple of weeks of the season, the Cowboys are getting stronger and getting better. And if that trend continues as we go forward, as in the Cowboys are able to continue to get better on the offense and Jake Ferguson keeps taking steps that we finally learn to use Brandon Cooks where we can stretch the field, that maybe we pass less to Jalen Tolbert, I mean, excuse me, to uh, Michael Gallup and more to Jalen Tolbert, that this offense and the offensive line can start really getting their, their themselves together because we've only had three games with our whole starting lineup together. Then maybe by the end of the season, we may not have home field advantage, but we may have a team that's playing really, really well going into the playoffs. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? Yeah, I, I, I did talk about playoffs. I, I did talk about playoffs, Jim. Sorry. But these are things that you have to look at. And, and I know it's hard losing to the Eagles because we hate the Eagles. I'm, I'm getting trashed by Eagle fans and everything else. Um, and that's fine. You, you guys, you, you, you won the game. You know, you deserve to be able to be talked about and to be able to trash talk. That's the nature of the beast. If you're going to talk the talk, walk the walk. And I'm here walking the walk. I'm not hiding like these cockroaches. Guys I've never seen before that have decided to come on my channel and troll me. Now, I'm going to say, if you've been one of those Eagle fans that have been here all the time, talking smack, taking it, give and take, cool, no problem. Come in right away. But don't be one of those cockroaches that have never been here before. Come in and talk some smack and think that you're not going that it's just going to get away with it. You got to pay your dues, bro. You got to pay your dues, okay? Philadelphia, Logan Motorsports, you know, lovely Linda. These are people that pay the dues. They 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 have all Philly five hundred. They have all the right in the world to tell me my team sucks. But if you ain't never been here before, bro, get a step. Get a step. Now, we can talk about the penalties. We can talk about, you know, the mistakes that were made down the stretch. In the end, you had two great teams going at it, punch after punch. And we just fell a little short. We have to learn how to win. Now let's go to get up, take our medicine, see how bad they trash our team. We need to see the Dallas Cowboys take that next step because what they finally do know is it's not about our quarterback. Yeah. Stop blaming it on him. It's not his fault. We won't lose because of him. Now, how do we help him get over that hump? And we saw the Philadelphia Eagles do that for Jalen Hurts when he was in. You know what they always get wrong? Somehow, the clock is always <laughs> a problem. So I'm about to do, Cindy Morello is our director. She's the best in the business. I'm about to direct a segment. Cindy, I want to see the, the sack, the one that we just showed a moment ago, and take the, the, the topic bar off the screen because you need to see the clock. You need to see how much time is remaining. So when the sack comes in at the end of the game, when they have the first and goal, this is first down. Pocket. He's going to get sacked. Okay? Down he goes. At this point, so the clock itself is not on the Can't screen. Yet. Steal, but there man. was a lot of time yep. left in this game. And Greg Olson is yelling, clock get back ball. to the line of scrimmage and clock it. They didn't. They it raced was back. They threw another pass. And that's the reason they only had time for one more yep. play. It was third down when right. the clock yep. ran out on them. They would have had two more chances. But when this play happens there's still more than enough time if they yeah. clocked it to run, to throw two passes into the end zone and instead the clock runs out with them on the one yard line that happens to the Cowboys all the time Rex I'm going to blame the coach until, unless you Absolutely. tell me not to no 100 percent and look you 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 put yourself even in training camp you always go situational football all right and I can't tell you how many two minute uh, against your defense you'll you'll go against right one team looked uh, completely uh, prepared for it. That's Philadelphia, right? They know what they got to do in those situations. Dallas 
has never looked prepared. And that's why I think when it comes down to it, you think they're going to fire uh, Dak Prescott? You no. think they're going to fire, you know, all these guys? No, they're going to fire the coach. And believe me, that's what it's going to come down to. My biggest problem in this, I think, look, I, I picked Dallas to win the, to uh, be in the Super Bowl this year right. because of two guys they added. Stephon Gilmore, check. He's kicked butt. Yeah, he year. is. Yes, okay. he is. Brandon Cooks. What? <laughs> Where the hell is Brandon <laughs> Cooks? He should be your second option. I have no idea why he's not. Okay. This is why people hate us. Because the Cowboys are just so much fun to talk about. Yeah. And, and the Philadelphia Eagles aren't fun to talk about this year because it's not as pretty as it was last year. Right. Because it's been grimy, right? right. Because they've been in absolute slugfest. And they just win. They win. And we're nine games deep, and they're the only team in the entire NFL with just one loss. And no matter what, it always seems you can critique them for three and a half quarters. You can critique them until the two-minute warning in the fourth quarter. And then they just find a way. Yep. And the one week that they didn't find a way, when the Jets found a way to beat them, they put pressure, they turned the football over, and we looked at Jalen Hurts afterwards, and nobody here panicked. We didn't come in here on Monday and say they won't be back. We didn't come on here on Monday and question Jalen Hurts. Michael Parsons actually asked us, why don't we question Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles when they lose or when he turns it over three times the way we do the Dallas Cowboys? Mm -hmm. Because of this. Yeah. Because he got hurt, he was laying on the ground, and all he did on the first drive in the third quarter was make a way. All he did was use his legs to pick up a first down. When he got one-on-one -on -one and it was single high, he threw a ball oh. that nobody in the world can throw better. Yeah. Maybe you can throw it just like it, but you can't throw it better. Because when he's been called upon to make plays, he That's has. true. When A.J. Brown has been called upon to make plays, he has. We've gotten used to it. And it's, oh. it's sad that we don't talk about it. It's like watching, it's like watching great fighters and you're like, yeah, I know he's 15. Yeah. We get it. I'm telling you. We man. get it. It's a split decision, you, I, but it's great. Th th there is always this sentiment that we have to figure out a way to make Dallas better. Maybe Philly's just better. They are. This year. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe the answer last year was the Philadelphia Eagles are the better team in the NFC. And that's okay. Yeah. But let me tell you this, though. And, and it's always my issue. We, we, for how long I've been doing this job, G, with you? For four five years. years. Five years. We've had constant conversations about mm -hmm. what is Jerry going to do? Who is he going to bring yeah. in? How is he going to get this team over the top? What's up? Does, does, does the continued growth in their popularity and their money make it okay that they don't go out and make Absolutely. Get players? Absolutely. It's the it's, biggest falsehood in the NFL, mm -hmm. bro. Do, give me every Super Bowl team over the last five years that didn't make a major yep. move in free agency. Yeah. Name one of them. Yep. Not one of the them. The Buffalo Bills ascended yeah. when they got Stephon Diggs. Yeah. The Cincinnati Bengals drafted Joe Burrow, and that came together. They revamped and spent $100 million on an offensive line. The Kansas City Chiefs went out and got Juju Smith. This is the best quarterback Philadelphia. in the yeah. Philadelphia. Don't even get me yeah. started on Philly. Yeah. Hey, how we roll, we go do it. On the phone right. now. now man, <laughs> trying to figure out how to get this secondary better. And we always sit here, and people get mad at me when they talk about, well, you don't think Dallas is good enough, and we don't. Bro, why would I? Yeah. Why he hit the nail on the head. The, 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 literally what's in front of you and winning Super Bowls, your team is not doing. And I'm mad as hell because I'm a fan of the team. And they will not do what it takes to win a Super Bowl. It made me nervous. Situational like football. Right. That's where the Eagles are better. Absolutely. Right. And, and maybe almost all the other teams in the NFL. Hey, the Raiders humiliate okay, the Giants. So we'll leave it right there. Yeah, the Raiders humiliate the Giants. We won't inflict any more pain on Rashid. But you know what? If we can get a win this weekend – Get up to six and three. You know, it's not, we're, we're always going to hear, well, you can't beat the great teams. Okay, well, you can't right now. You got time to get that shit together. And if, as long as you are getting better and not getting worse, I'm okay with that. All right, good people. I'm going to go ahead to vote and then I'm heading down the country and I will see you at the Red Brick House. Our coach here, as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe for the Sports Report. Hmm.